Welcome to the Daily Addictions channel. Today I'm going to be talking about Star Trek Fleet Command. This is a mobile game I've done a podcast on a year ago, so this could be a revisited or a year later. And I'll give my opinion on the game and the state I'm in, and I wish I would have done maybe something more time-stamped in the first one, where I said I'm at level 29 or etc. and more of a mapping but i'll do my best here maybe some alliance members will come across this it is a little over a year later and my opinion of the game hasn't changed much in the sense of if you can be disciplined have a plan not put money into the game you can have fun if you could just accept your reality or your role in the game and i think that's important here of how you attack the game i joined an alliance at around level 31 so i'm gonna say that other podcast was probably in the late 20s to just about 30 because I, I said i wasn't an alliance etc the alliance aspect of the game opens up a good fun team aspect of armadas now you can do armadas at 23rd level you can start building your thing and you get small groups of a team you can go in like three then four then five and you fight these stations now one of the best moments i've ever had in this game so far is struggling to beat rare exchange armadas so if you know the terminology and the lingo you'll get what i'm on you'll understand what i'm saying but there are armadas that are federation romulan klingon and independent or pirates and they float around the system and they go from uncommon rare epic and they have a pretty decent progression although you'll know you'll know where you fit like uh you're gonna blow up on this um armada because you're low level and your research isn't up your ships aren't up to par but we advise stay in it go boom as long as someone survives you get some of the loot and it's way more beneficial, meaning the repair costs and stuff are uh, so small compared to what you're going to get because you're buying or uh, you're getting uh, Alliance loot or Armada loot and you'll get Uncommon and Rare and Epic and you go into your Alliance store and you buy the packs. Excellent for low level players or mid to low. I don't know what you call that these days, but if you're getting near 23, start coming to the Alliance the uh, armadas and participate. Sometimes we, uh, we try to leave a spot open or if we've done some, we pull out. If there's an event happening, we try to get the people in the event. I like that aspect. And one of the best parts of the game, one of the most fun moments, the most memorable moments is we're trying to do Eclipse Exchange Rares in the Rogue section of the game. Now these operate a little different than the other armadas in the game. The Uncommons, probably similar, a little bit different deceptive but doable when you get the new ship called the stella it has a better firing pad you got to get the research and it is a good way of not using up your resources so when you're in the game going through the, through the uh ships and you're progressing you're getting certain ships here but you want to plan and you know what i'll get this right out of the right out of the way go watch rev deuce type in a question you have in youtube uh, use the tag like STFC um, PVP cruise or PVE cruise and you'll see people and Revduce just happens to be the most popular or the most entertaining to me and there are other people who do this great uh, I'm just a these days a chatty fucking patty I guess but there's um, people who do this really good now there's a reddit community and other communities that are exceptional I still can't wrap my head around fucking reddit I started the internet from the beginning, not I started, I didn't create it, but I got on immediately, I'm 50 years old, so I saw the progression, I got I knew web, uh, Python code and web code coding, I was, uh, you know, doing um, stuff that I, so, I mean, I never stuck in it, I probably would have made money, but there's a, a progression, and now we're into, like, mobile games, and that's a distinction to make here, but these guys go look at their, um, content do some research learn about the ships learn about uh 
how things work in the game or ask me in the chat ask people in your alliance asking questions is the best way there's no um ridicule or embarrassment except when i start joking around because you're bringing nutty crews and only because i've jokingly gave you recommendations numerous times about the crew so getting back to the best moment i've had in the game we're struggling to beat what's called the rare exchange armada the lowest level is a 31 and at the time we only had a 33 in a group maybe a 31 and we kept getting wiped out do research find the right crews and we beat one in two goes meaning we had a attack it we hit its health down we started it again and we beat it but the most favorite mo favorite favorite moment is we did it in one go and it was the struggle to get there it was the research it was the strategizing because the game doesn't allow you in any other aspect of the, in the game in my opinion to really strategize i think i mentioned this in the other game you play battlestar galactica online or i did you had movement of your ship in vectors you had boost and you had tactics on what angle you're coming at your enemy for how much speed do you fly by them and hit your rcs slide and, and turn around and like there's so much going on short range weapons versus long range weapons and do you put missiles on your ship that strategy is not in this game it's a it's a quick animated dance between two ships or even the armada the strategy comes in who you crew, how you plan things, and what you're using for the moment. The right tool for the right job is basically it. But it's deceptive in that players see power scores of their ship, and they know they have their strongest um, level characters or crew members, so they put them in the ship and hope for the best. And this seems like good logic, right? They have, it gets the power you score of your ship up and it seems like it raises everything you right but you're missing an element of the game so for new players you've got crews that go out to fight the hostiles in the game which are the computer controlled pve content and there are daily missions you want to do and you got to get your stuff done with factions and hit them so if you go out with what we call a hostile crew so in the beginning, it's Cadet Ohora, Cadet McCoy, and you want to use Shen or Talan. One protects against energy, one protects against kinetic. The two different types, and whatever you're going, the situation, that's your crew. Now they've added new characters in the same vein as easy or low-level hostile crew, and it's the next generation Beverly Crusher, I mean next generation well, LaForge, as Captain and Beverly Crusher, Next Generation, and they are exactly the same as Cadet O'Hara. Even the wording might be worded differently, but they work the same. Then you put Shan or Talon at the end. You go to your hostiles, they will work better than your other crews. Even if you've got a higher level Gorkon or a Nero. And you save those for the PvP. Now, like I said, go watch Reb Deuce or type in questions in Google, STFC best pvp crew or your ship you like i like the legionnaire ftfc legionnaire crew and you start learning about your ship and about how it's crewed on the top and the bottom you get your bridge crew and you got the under crew and how you're gonna these people are good at it they put the time in they're very nice and friendly even the ones that i might not find so entertaining or my cup of tea but the content is out there they put in the work some you can watch the logs the data look into it get the numbers crunch you pull out your calculator so but that's it though there's not the you know i gotta worry about this angle so they introduced some new stuff so i'll go here next where looking at it from a year of content much improvement i happen to like the stellar stuff doing that grind because now that i have a max vidar i could switch my focus from bog probe grinding to the eclipse hostiles which i need so much now because i upped my reputation in rogue faction big mistake but i'm level 35 now and i have to get a special token at level 35 and you have to be a certain reputation to unlock a new branch of the stellar research tree or the rogue outlaw research tree let's make my stella so much more potent because 
Like I said, one of my favorite moments in the game was struggling, getting to a exchange rare, having to use a full team twice to beat it, and then figuring things out. Some people get power ups and you get leveled up, or um, you buy your uh, uh, packs here and here, which are somewhat recommended for me because it's a game I don't recommend put money in because in this game if you want the enterprise when you hit level 34 and you have no blueprints it's gonna cost you a thousand dollars that's a criminal that's bullshit so i was talking with a friend because uh we're using discord a little bit going into the voice chat on how if you paid a thousand dollars you better get that ship fully tiered and what i mean is you will get your enterprise if you buy the thousand dollars all together in packs like a hundred dollars each you got enough blueprints, you got to build your enterprise. And then it's first level, and it still needs all this material, insane amounts of material, to get it up to 45th level or tier 9. And I'm talking bottlenecks and grinds of real... It's real hard work to get that thing up. And $1,000 is just going to get you at first level with nothing on it. I find that to be a fucking joke. But the problem is, people do it, and I'm all for it. Meaning... I play this game for free. I love, what do you call them, wallet warriors, coiners, whales, even dolphins. Look, I put maybe, I don't know, I don't, I don't 60, I don't know, I put playing the game, not a lot. I'm, I'm a nobody, free to play player. I don't even put money into the game. But if you want a quick thing, I would recommend the monthly $20 thing, the battle pass $20 thing, or the $5 uh, uh, tactical packs. But if you do have money, since I'm like, struggling every month for rank these days you would look at the galactic armada pack is a hundred bucks like there are things to find but there's things behind such a big paywall it's ridiculous but the favorite moment of hitting that exchange armada doing it with a team figuring things out now we got other team members and we're figuring things out giving advice on crew it's the only aspect i really super enjoy there was a moment i almost quit the game and there were a lot of things going on in my life, and I was, I've was i talked about that in a the podcast. There's a storyline they introduce, and they go through the arcs, and we're in the next generation arc, and you go after, after certain mission change, and you follow the things, and you go from system to system. And you know what? It, put, it seems like there's some effort in there, there's some story, and you get an element, a little tech, a little, you know... Uh, nostalgia from the characters coming in and them explaining timelines and such it, it's, it's pretty enjoyable so you get on a mission chain and you go to meet up with the Enterprise now you go online you see animated trailers for the game you show things that are not possible in the game it's all geared towards getting you in the game but you're not going to fly like that you're not going to get the Enterprise D and the Enterprise D is all over the place they show um animations of inside the ship and all the characters it's not part of the game but i'm okay with that to a certain extent because when i went on this mission chain to meet the enterprise i knew eventually the enterprise d was coming into the game or a skin i'll get to that in a second so i go to meet the enterprise d and it's not a reskin ship it's a crappy ship they use for aliens or the same ship they use for Cardassians. It's a generic garbage ship you see every day in the shit in, in the field. It was so half-assed. I got disgusted because this is my immersion. There's another aspect of the game people love and have fun with. PvP, hitting bases, going out and challenging other players. And I, I'm just not me. I'm a real PvE grinder. The story, immersion in my ships and captain. And it just was... It really didn't sit well with me in a, on a, as a whole. I want to see the Enterprise D skin, at least. And by the way, the Enterprise D skin comes out for the Enterprise. For free. I don't have the Enterprise. I'm not gonna, I'm 30, level 35, and I'm not going to get there anytime soon. And this is a, a little warning to do the research first. I made plenty of mistakes. I wish I would have got these content creators taken seriously. They don't want to take the game seriously at first. It's a mobile game. And I want to have fun in spurts of time in between. And I don't like stupid puzzle games. And I love Star Trek. When you get serious and stuff. And you look at the aspects that you love. That ship not skinned to look like the Enterprise. 
really pissed me off. And then five minutes later, I got to do a mission where I got to buy, with major resources, a token to get to a special system. And I'm like, you got to be fucking kidding me. All right, I buy it, I do it, and my frustration's growing. I follow the mission chain again, mission after mission, and again, they tell me I have to buy another one. So I have to go grind fucking Eclipse Hostiles. I'm up in my rep, so it's costing me a fucking fortune of 50-something thousand credits and resources. And the higher up I'm going, the worse it's getting. So one of my teammates who's lower faction rep can buy the same token... For half the price or less. When I up my rep, I got to pay more than double. I don't get more than one. I only get one. Now I'm at faction rep known associate. I got to pay 118k for one token. One fucking token. Now my teammate who just got into the rep faction, he's paying 12,000 for his one. Go fuck yourself. Give me three. This progress, this has to be looked at in general. And it's an annoying fucking feature. And I almost quit the game. I was like, this is fucking stupid. I was so disgusted and annoyed. But, as I explained in some other podcasts, I was going through something in my life. And it could have clouded things. But in general, I don't think it's a good thing to do. It's one of the aspects, or one of the only aspects I love to do with my alliance. I'm very withdrawn. I'm very, it doesn't seem like that way in the chat, right? Because I'm always fucking around, but. As much as I love the players and, and I've gotten friends, I can go back on my um, alone in a heartbeat. Now I find that to be an issue with myself because that just helps me. You know, I retreat into my shell, and I see that in the team members who I'm looking to get out of their shell because I understand it. It's a lot of my podcasts and stuff have to do with mental health and depression, and everybody's life impacts things in certain ways and there people playing the game they love it there are family problems and economic problems and pandemic this is hard so i try to not read anything into anything with other people and there's drama in your life and stuff but when you send me out on a mission <clears throat> and it's my immersion into the game it's the part of the game i love you send me and five months later you put out the the, the uh the uh, Enterprise D skin, and it's it's gross. It looks horrible because it's a skin that goes over the Enterprise that you get in the game. What they do in this game is so stupid, and it really bothers them. I talked about in the first podcast I did about how the weapons work, and I don't like it. I don't want to be in my Federation destroyer shooting out green balls of energy. I don't want to be with my interceptor, which just looks disgusting to Saladin, and shoot out bullet-looking things. So to, to address, address that, they have tried so i feel more of immersion when i spent things and i bought things in events that got me projectiles that look like blue lasers i'm okay with that on my salad and as an interceptor i could now put a decent looking green phaser on one of my romulan ships and cling on all the ones i like the green ball of radiation i keep there as a default and then, all right so that's a little better but these arcs and the storylines, if you're going to promote them, you make trailers and videos. Shame on you, Scopely, for the bullshit. I understand my role. I respect the people who pay, put the money in. They love the game. I fucking am so happy. I don't go for events with leaderboards and hours left and people throw $10,000 into the game or whatever. And you, they win the leaderboard. I don't bother with that. So I have a plan that I'm happy with. and I don't rush to things. And I want all my teammates to rise up to my level and surpass me. So I have a good outlook on the game. And I still do. Because I'm still in my alliance, Ronin of Starfleet. Uh, you see the, the image I'm using is like a banner for us. And... I really have come to have friends and love the company and I'm on trying to get on Discord and voice and help and stuff like that. However, the game is dangerously insulting in that way that I look at things happening in the game that are so unfair that I don't know why the rules are there and I think it's come to whatever Scopely set out to do no matter what their intentions were, they've made a game that breeds bullies and bottom feeders. You want economic use of your time, so you find ways to do shortcuts, 
and because they didn't put in the right foundation, the right framework of a game, it's people leave the game in droves and they start new servers and people leave server like what you got a level 59 bully in your fucking server um what what determines the server who makes the rules of engagement the row all this stuff becomes nonsense drama but things that start off with a good intention that just get twisted and abused but as much as i can rail against certain things there is a method and a plan to keep your head down but stick up for yourself and get through the game not no not come to much bullshit or nonsense and have a good time but there's still that factor i talked about in the other game you got new players joining the alliance oh you know i fell asleep i didn't shield well you lost all your resources right well the game has progressed so much in certain areas that you can't touch these other characters so, for instance, it's okay to hit what you call a floater. A ship's not sit. A ship is just sitting there. It's fair game, and I'm all for that. But guess what? Try to hit a level 48 who's just sitting there when you're level 25. No, it's, it benefits the big guys because they consider who's gonna. You, you can't attack these guys. They got all the research, all the depend who the crew is on their ship. It's just ridiculous. And you're mining, you're going out mining, or you're doing your hostile run, and you got your hostile crew, your miners, and your overprotected cargo to come get you. There could have been a framework, and we talked about it here and here with a friend or an alliance member, where you could look at it and go, they could have had any 20th level under faction or independent space, you can't PvP. That's it. No designated systems. And then when people go into a system where it is PvP, they made that decision. They're giving you the green light that if they forget the shield, come get me. Right? I dare you. I'm like, right. No. Let the lower level... I'm already past this. It's not going to benefit me. But the frustration and the aggravation and people just want to have fun with their friends, it gets ridiculous. So there's so much room for improvement in this game. It is one of the only mobile games I dedicate myself to. I play, I interact with the Alliance and have fun with them. One of the... I laughed so hard one day, I tears were coming out of my eyes, and the screen was blurry. I'm not kidding you. It was, uh, we were going after exchange on modders, the rare ones, and now that we kind of know what we need to do, we need people to cruise certain crews. It doesn't matter what you think is stronger, what you think is more powerful. These characters work against these armadas. And it takes a while to, you know, connect and get it true to them. And there's one guy who just brought a crew member. He had three people on his crew, and one of them was a triple. And the fucking triple, all he does as a secondary ability is, that helps the ship is, gives you cargo hold increase. Or he lets you mine faster, I think, is the, is the one. So we go, we get, some of us get wiped, some get wiped. Right? And as we're giving this advice and talking, I'm just astounded he keeps coming back after being destroyed with the triple. So I start making jokes. Never forget the triple. This became, I was... I'm not kidding you. One of the most fun times I've ever had in this game. But it leads to a problem in the game where it kind of connects to what I'm talking about. So if these guys go out and they mine with mining, right? There's a protected cargo. If you're over that protected cargo, you can get hit. But there's row rules of engagement for certain sectors where you have to spend a token. You go in there and you're protected. The new is a rule. Right, unless you're zero node and you know they give you a warning or something. But if you're mining, you can fill up your thing, guy. Right? That benefits the high levels. Now, if you said even twentieth level or lower sectors, you can't hit miners. What's so bad about that? I don't care. I can't hit miners at a level. Th Let these guys fill up their fucking cargo with the resources so they can join things and do things. And I think it's a bullshit narrative. And don't get me wrong, Ro started probably as a good fucking thing. Helpful. Community. Uh, pol policing the community. Great. But it gets twisted in these fucking rules and it's just... It's just our, our Ro got made fun of by Rev Deuce or something like that recently. It's just silly and stupid. But it's not streamlined, easy, boom. And then you talk and you do your town fucking meeting and you get the alliance members together and you talk about things. Uh, okay, whatever. But there's a fundamental problem in the game. 
Keep these guys in your alliance and see how they progress and what they ask for. You've got all types of people who don't want to talk, who don't want to ask for things. They want to get to a certain place and feel comfortable. It's, in my opinion, you want an alliance that's um, a portion of your pirates and raiders. You want a portion of your grinders and PvE. You want a portion of your farmers. And so you want a portion of your alliance that might not talk and participate, but they're there turning the engine, getting the, you know, doing their thing, building up, getting more powerful. And you're going out and running the Amadas and uh, going through the missions and learning about things, doing research, giving some advice when you can see it's hard on them. Then you got your groups that go out and like the PvP, raid base. A nice blend is great but this game just breeds bullies and bottom feeders again i'll say it and it just at times makes it so frustrating it makes you just want to play by yourself i can't tell you how many times people just quit go on their own become rogue or, or done with the rules blah 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 blah. play the way you want to play i say but without the framework it doesn't work so the game needs to improve in the year, but I do enjoy the content. The rewards are getting better. You're getting so much stuff that I couldn't get back in the day. All that type of attitude are improvements for a game that I sort of love, that I get immersed in, and content that's coming. Like, things interest me, and I, I'm interested, and I, I'm on every day. Now, my focus and time is efficient. So I don't have to be dedicated. I don't have to feel like I need to go in. I miss some dailies or I miss some things. I don't feel anxiety. And some of these things impact players. Oh, I got to do all my stuff. I got to get my stuff done. It's just, it's overwhelming. All the events and all these things, that, right? You make a base game easier for everybody. And everybody, how it would benefit me, that means everybody in my alliance under 20th level can be filling up their cargo, not worrying about people jumping them, overprotect the cargo, get the resources you need, because guess what? I don't care how much resources you have, these poles suck. So I have 5 million of each ore, gas, and crystal. Now, that keeps me comfortable. I don't get it, I feel comfortable. I don't have to do my, but guess what? The dailies require you to mine. Okay, get it done. Put your ships in. I'm open to do what I want to do depending on the day. I feel bad. I don't feel good that day. I have a bad day, a good day. These players don't have that. And it just feels frustrating that I like to help them streamline. So, again, I'm going to recommend go do research. Listen to these guys, Rev Deuce and all these play players and the content creators. They play the game. They understand. They do the research. They take the time to help you. They try to be entertaining. Yes, Reddit and some of the forum stuff is a little bogged down, and I still can't get my head around it, like I said before. But in general, I look at this game, and I look at my progress in it, and I'm pretty happy. You know, I've come, well, I'm at 35th level, my plan's working, and I know where my, what my role is and my, what my place is. I'm always going to be three levels behind, so if Revdu says you're... Uh, if, if the plan is this, this, and this, and if you followed his advice, you would get your enterprise at 34. And you would follow a great plan that they come up with, camping, soft camping, and all the advice, how to crew your ships. It's all out there. Learn it. And it can be done well. And I'm three levels behind, so I know at level 37, I'll be getting my enterprise, more my epic ship. I'll take, I'll take the enterprise all the fucking all good. I love them both. And as I'm looking backwards, you know, looking at the mistakes and understanding what I could have done and doing the research and helping people with crews and all that, the game's not helping me, my friends of the Alliance, optimally. And I think that needs to change, and it is changing. Away teams have been brought in, the content's a little more diverse, where... Like I said, the Stella, you up the Stella, it's, oh, it's more grind, but it doesn't subtract from your resources you need to a certain extent. So when you follow the path of the game and you go from uh, Interceptor, Explorer, Battleship, Interceptor, Explorer, Bladdership, in the low levels, it doesn't affect you. But once you start getting into the ships, like 26 level and stuff, they take crystal ore and parts. So if you pick an, uh, an Interceptor on your first ship and you like the Interceptors, every progression... It's going to make it harder for you to keep those resources because they keep demanding it. So one of the little uh, hop, skip, jumps you do is you pick your D3 first, but then you go to your Mayflower, and then you go to your battleship, or whatever. You know, you want to go to the Intrepid Sucks, but 
or get the borders and meaning you, you'll be saving your resources. So again, it just podcast would be an hours long. So much to talk about. It's so complicated in in certain areas that I think can be streamlined for players. So I still am enjoying the game. I recommend it to people. Go and know in where you fit in. How much do I put in the game? You know what? I would recommend. Oh, I got some money to put in the game, and I like it. Fine. Buy the twenty dollars pass. It gives you the best bang for your buck. Oh, you know what? This is an event this week. The battle pass. I think it's a good value. Now. I might decide to one day get the $5 uh, Amada tactics, but if someone asks me to add money, no, you want to wait, you want to get that Galactic Amada core. It's 100 bucks, but if you're going to spend 100 bucks, that's the value, and you find out where you fit in. However, I'll say it again, buying 10 packs to get your Enterprise $1,000 is fucking ridiculous. And like other games, when people get together and stop paying and they change things, I don't think that's going to happen here. People are just totally comfortable. And guess what? It's, it's all relative. If I got tons of fucking money, I'll buy the Enterprise. However, it takes a lot of discipline and fortitude or whatever to say, on principle, I'm not. I'm a fucking millionaire, right? Whatever, whatever the fuck. I got so much money, it's not funny. I still will not buy that Enterprise. However, if you follow the plan and you're close to getting your enterprise, when the sale comes out, maybe buy the $100 pack to get what you need. So, I'm not saying, this, you know, it's a bad thing to spend money in a game. I wish I could, and I would. However, I would do it smart and with a plan. And you go watch the content. I keep saying that. Look, you're listening to me. And you should be listening to Rev Deuce on specific things, PvP crews, the state of the game, things that came out, go back to his early videos, other content creators that he mentions in their community to try to get new things implemented and help things. I'm all for it. But looking at this, ending this, and wrapping this up, my place in this game, after a year from that podcast, and I think I got in the game around when the board came, and I don't know if people could... Give me a time on when that is, but fine. So you, if you know the game, you, that's when you're in it. I can't see how long. I did find the plan eventually. It helped me immensely. Keep things stocked up, learn how to spend things, and get a plan. But accepting where you are, what you can do, your limitations is important. Because it creates a desire you can't meet and you get frustrated. Take a step back. Ask questions. Yeah, sometimes it, the type word seems like, you know, you come off as an asshole. I even say that in some of the direct messages or the private messages. Like, look, I just wanted your help and I'm joking around. My hope would be a lot more people get on Discord. But guess what? This isn't like a computer game where you get your Discord. This is a phone game, a mobile game. And you can play it on certain other things. But now it's got a PC version. So what I hope to see is more people get on Discord and join those communities. However, the server 42, which is I'm a part of, that server, that Discord, can go fuck itself. It's a cesspool of garbage. So fuck off. Now, the general game Discord, it's just, it's just, not, it's just announcements and stuff. No real deep dives and stuff. And since... Most people are cunts in the game in that way. I don't see myself ever going to Discord for that information. So I created a Discord for our alliance. And I put the links in, made the categories. So it could help new players and stuff. So that would be my hope. That it's a mobile game, yes, but it's got a PC version now. People could open up their Discord, keep it open, that type of thing. And I hope it'll help ease things because speaking on discord helps communicate you know your your what your emotion is with joking and you know, i'm a wise ass so i'm always i always say the wrong thing but i prevent myself from typing it hit and enter because you don't know what people are going through what's going on in their lives and what their frustrations are you know everybody's just trying to have fun in the game and you don't want to take that away from people but maybe learning and listening a little more can make your game more efficient. Make your time in the game much more fun because you can get things done. 
and assume you're wrong in everything. I, part of skepticism, part of daily life, and the way I live my life is, every once in a while I reevaluate all my beliefs, and I assume I'm wrong. And when you get the hint that someone tells you something about a crew, assume, hey, could I be wrong? Look at the, okay, I know it's been, look at the log, see who, when the crew we recommended, and how it lasts, and how it makes you more efficient, how it helps the team more, but, moments like the guy bringing the triple when we needed something else, I laughed my ass off for hours, these are fun people, these are humans, and as a general rule, I love humanity as a general rule, at a certain level, now, information starts altering that. So, I try to, I always live my life as a stranger you meet, you give them a certain amount of love and respect, until you learn about them, and then it changes. And, learning in the game, I still think most alliances suck. They're all fucking bullies and bottom feeders with, you know, good people mixed in, but the game just breeds it. And I'd like to see that change. I'd like to see uh, alliance, more, more alliance members come out of their shell and be more participative. But I still think they're needed and they're valued. So we do value you. You got uh, 35 people in our alliance and only 10 speak or whatever communicate, but 18 are active to 20. I don't want to pester the 18, like active people who just are getting this shit done. They, they had to join our alliance and get something. We love you. We need you. You're valued. And as you come up and you start talking you know, and you show up at these alliance and these amadas <clears throat> and the events, it's okay to ask for things, to say, oh, this, hunt, this hunter is coming after me, or this, you know, um, whatever. Uh, you get aggravated, you get enemies that you come into a territory you're not faction aligned with, or they don't like you, they send them a thing after you. And they sit there and they get blown up, but you're from the line. You look for these things, you try to be more careful and thoughtful of other people, then I think that's the strong point of the game at this point for me. But as I said, the way I think, the way my brain works, I'm always a heartbeat away from going back on my own. But I find myself in a role in this alliance. I don't want to be the leader. You know, I want to just give advice, and if you take it, you take it. Assume everything I say is wrong, and I mistook something I read or watched. And check it out for yourself. But all in all, Star Trek Fleet Command is still fun for me. It still gives me a reason to turn on my game when my mind just wants to get away and play the game and chat with my friends. And it is still enjoyable for me. And way on the scale, they're more bad. But I see the bad for other people, like where I can deal with things and they can't. And it really hurts the game but i like the changes i see and i like where the game is going but don't pull the bullshit with fucking trailers for this game with animation that's not in the game it never plays like that you're not gonna get anything that looks like that and then when you do go on the fucking mission for the enterprise you show me a shit ship that's been in the game since the beginning that you keep fucking using for everybody two weeks later you put out a fucking skin that looks disgusting but you couldn't have used that you couldn't use that ship, the Mayflower, which looks like an uh, Enterprise. Nothing, no. They half-assed everything and fucked it. It was just gross. And then going on that mission, paying for the things. So they make huge mistakes, in my opinion. But the core is still worth it for me. I still enjoy the aspects of the game. But I'm going to tell you what assholes you are, Scopely. I'm going to tell you how much I hate these fucking alliances and the nonsense that goes on. <clears throat> but... You can work the game. You can play the system. You could <clears throat> learn a lot and progress and not be bullied and kicked. Well, you know what? No, you can't. You'll just have to stick up for yourself here and there and hope for the best. But you can work it. You could find your path in this game. It takes a little work. So research, ask questions, go look and as a diction master in the game, I'm on social media. If you see me, you can ask me. I'll probably just refer you to Rev Deuce. But in a quick communication when I'm in chat, it's like, hey, you know who would work great for this, that team? Uh, you know, Kumak, Nero, Levitt, or whatever the fuck his name is, Vemmit. 
and you know we need to get on discord to find the nuances because it's hard to type and get so that's my state of the game right now star trek fleet command get a little more uh social friendly maybe a new tab for system um uh, create a foundation for now you got an influx of new players they're just getting wiped and bogged down and bullshit make it a little more streamlined and easier for them even if it doesn't benefit me i think you need to correct course a little bit scopely and i guess i'll end there i might do more and like different things like this one will probably be a year later and then i might do a um uh you know another thing as i see my interests and wane or grow so i keep uh, now the only other game i play here and there i play Earth, transformers earth wars but i don't care about deep dives into my alliance or talking with them i just love my transformers and it's the, one of the worst fucking pay games ever the walking dead game i've talked about i might have did a podcast on on no man's land or something i play when i'm in the mood for horror if i get to but it's not an immersed game i play and dedicate time to Marvel Future Fight. I give no fucks about it. I log in here and there and check it out. And it doesn't inspire me. Even the most, as much as I love Black Widow. Back in the day, Marvel Future Fight, I would watch a Marvel movie and just go play up and play the game. I get so love it. No. Marvel Future Fight hit the threshold for me where it's not enjoyable no more to me. I think that can happen in this game. And I think a lot of people go through that same thing. Real life, frustration, bottlenecks frustration that grows and stays with you it almost becomes like an anxiety and it is a daunting test to some people but there's hope and i think that's what you need to look for in this game but you have to do a little work so good luck out there if it was battlestar galactica i'd be like good hunting have fun in the game that's important you're not having fun, maybe reach out to an alliance member or join an alliance or go do some research and find the answers for the questions you seek, like, you know, uh, uh, how to make PvP easier or, you know, all this stuff people have foreseen or have a, had gone through themselves. Do a lot of research, look into it. Yes, it's one of those games, so maybe that's a pro or con in your opinion. I don't know. For me, I see it as a mixture where I enjoy it, but I can totally see people going, I'm not going to fucking search and watch a 15-minute video on my, um, my Gladius. Just tell me what the fuck is you think is good. And I'm fine with that and talk like, oh, well, they said, you know, go con... Curler Khan, that type thing. So anyway, I'll end it here, because this is pretty long now. But it's a game I do play. It's a game I immerse myself in. I don't even pay, play any PC games. My computers suck. I can't handle anything. Although, my brother and my nephews gave me an Xbox X series, and his Red Dead Redemption 2 sitting there. I'm, I, the first one's like my favorite. And the second I start getting into that, all these games might just fade away. So, there is competition out there. And it might not be someone's Xbox or a good PC game that came out with Star Trek Online. The game is amazing. I just wish I had a computer that can handle it and I'd be fucking playing that all the time. I just um, don't like some of the aspects of this game that I have dealt with and others are dealing with that I see the frustration mounting and growing. So, Enjoy yourself. Have fun. Ask questions. Do research. There is fun to be had in this game. There is fun to be had in alliances and reaching out to other people. There's fun sometimes going rogue and accepting reality of the game and how you're going to fit in it. So, give it a shot. I still recommend it. Easier for new players jumping in. You're going to get way more resources and specials, but be wary. Have a plan. If you love the game, enjoy it. Have a plan even on what you're going to pay for because you will find yourself a little overwhelmed. And I guess I'll end it here. I wish everybody the best. Have fun. My best to you and yours.